Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew Coming persecutions, Jesus said to His disciples, But beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Comments from the Church Fathers Rabinus Morris That by the wolves above ye intended men, he shows when he adds, Take heed of men. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas Ye have indeed need to be wise as serpents, for, as they are wont to do, they will deliver you to councils, forbidding you to preach in my name. Then if ye be not corrected, they will scourge you, and at length ye shall be brought before kings and governors. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 10. Who will endeavor to extort from you either to be silent or to temporize? St. John Chrysostom, homily in Matthew, homily 33, 3. How wonderful that men who had never been beyond the lake in which they fished, did not straightway depart from him on hearing these things. It was not only of their goodness, but of the wisdom of their teacher. For to each evil he attaches somewhat of alleviation, as here he adds, For my sake, for it is no light consolation to suffer for Christ's sake, for they did not suffer as evil or wrongdoers. Again he adds, For a testimony against them. St. Gregory the Great, Homily in Evangelia, 35. Either that they had presented to the death, or that they had seen and were not changed. For the death of the saints is to the good an aid, to the bad a testimony, that thus the wicked may perish without excuse in that from which the elect take example and live. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 33, 3. This was matter of consolation to them, not that they sought the punishment of others, but that they were confident that in all things they had one present with them, and all knowing. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 10. And by this their testimony not only was all excuse of ignorance of his divinity taken away from their persecutors, but also to the Gentiles was opened the way of believing on Christ, who was thus devotedly preached by the voices of the confessors among the flames of persecution, and this is that he adds, and the Gentiles. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 33, 3. To the foregoing topics of consolation, he adds another not a little one, that they should not say, how shall we be able to persuade such men as these, when they shall persecute us? He bids them be of good courage respecting their answer, saying, When they shall deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Remigius of Auxerre How or what, one refers to the substance, the other to the expression in words. And because both of these would be supplied by him, there was no need for the holy preachers to be anxious about either. St. Jerome when then we are brought before judges for Christ's sake, we ought to offer only our will for Christ. But Christ who dwelleth in us speaks for himself, and the grace of the Holy Spirit will minister in our answer. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 10. For our faith, 
observing all the precepts of the divine will, will be instructed with an answer according to knowledge, after the example of Abraham, to whom when he had given up Isaac, there was not wanting a ram for a victim. For it is not ye who speak, but the spirit of your father that speaketh in you. Remigius of Auxerre. Meaning, ye indeed go out to the battle, but it is I who fight, you utter the words, but it is I who speak. Hence Paul speaks, Seek ye a proof of Christ who speaketh in me? 2 Corinthians 13 verse 3 St. John Chrysostom, Homily and Matthew, Homily 33, 5 Thus he raises them to the dignity of the prophets, who have spoken by the Spirit of God. He who says here, Take no thought what ye shall speak, 1 Peter 3 verse 15, has said in another place, Be always ready to give an answer to him that demandeth the reason of the hope that is in you. When it is a dispute among friends, we are commanded to be ready, but before the awful judgment, and the raging people, aid is ministered by Christ, that they may speak boldly and not be dismayed. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas Having placed the comfort first, he adds the more alarming perils, brother shall deliver up brother to death, and the father the son, children shall rise against parents, to put them to death. St. Gregory the Great Homily in Evangelia, 35, 3. The pains that come to us from strangers are less than those caused to us by those whose affection we count on, because in these the pain of lost charity is joined to bodily pain. St. Jerome. This is often the case in persecutions, for we should not expect fidelity in the affection of those whose faith is different. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 33, 3. What follows is yet more dreadful, ye shall be hated of all men, they sought to exterminate them as common enemies of all the world. To this again is added the consolation, for my name's sake, and yet further to cheer them, whosoever shall endure to the end, he shall be saved. For many are hot and zealous in the beginning, but afterwards grow cool, for these, he says, I look at the end. For where is the profit of seeds that only sprout at first? Wherefore he requires a sufficient endurance from them. St. Jerome. For virtue is not to begin but to complete. Remigius of Auxerre. The reward is given, not to those who start, but to those who endure. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 33, 5. But that no man should say, that Christ wrought all things in his apostles, and therefore it is nothing wonderful that they were made such as they were, since they did not bear the burden of these things. Therefore, he says, that perseverance was their work. For though they were rescued from their first perils, they are preserved for still harder trials, which again shall be followed by others, and they shall be in danger of snares as long as they live. This he covertly intimates when he says, Whosoever shall endure to the end, he shall be saved. Remigius of Auxerre. That is, he who shall not let go the commands of the faith, nor fall away in persecution, shall be saved he shall receive the reward of the heavenly kingdom for his earthly persecutions. And note that the end does not always mean destruction, but sometimes perfection, as in that, Christ is the end of the law. Ram 10 colon 4, so the sense here may be, whosoever shall endure to the end, that is, in Christ. St. Augustine, De Civitate Dei, 21, 25. To endure in Christ, is to abide in his faith which worketh by love. Galatians 5. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.